Hello, hello, my good dads. How are ya? Check it out. I got a new microphone. My dad actually got this for my son and I'm like, I'm going to use it because look how shiny it is. I mean, you can hear it tick, tick, tick. And what do you think? Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Anyways, as promised, I am going to give you a little explanation about why or how actually the video where the father um, in Texas, no, sorry, the lawyer in Texas got a father full custody where the judge ended up giving full custody to the dad and visitation to the mom. How did that happen? Okay, obviously, first of all, a disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer, okay? I don't claim to be a lawyer. I do not give legal advice. These videos and content that I create are for informational purposes only. Please make sure that you get legal advice or seek professional legal advice from a family law lawyer and do not, okay, stop yourself from getting professional legal advice because of content or videos or anything that you've seen or written from me, okay? Close that one up. Next one is my um, information comes from six years plus of being involved in the father's right movement or fam father's groups. Um, I have led uh, nation rallies and rallies. I have liaised with stakeholders. I have spoken to media, although very local media because back then it wasn't very mainstream. I also personally personally investigated when dads would post how they succeeded in 50% custody or how dads succeeded in full custody. And I've been that person that has gone and inboxed them and investigated, befriended them and asked them to give me their story, to tell me their story so that I could pass it on to everybody else and create content like this so that you dads are better informed and so that you dads know how the other ones did it. So a lot of the information is bittersweet because a lot of the information is also how dads lost a lot okay and um most of them will not tell you on facebook why they lost a lot they'll just say it's bias etc etc and they probably won't even understand why they lost a lot okay or they're too embarrassed to say that their own lawyers took them for a ride a lot of factors are included please understand that when you see negative stories on facebook take it with a grain of salt okay because it is impossible for somebody to explain the complexities and the intricates of what happened in their case in one paragraph on facebook okay it, it's not it can't be done so please take with a grain of salt just because you hear a negative story doesn't mean that you're going to be the same dads please don't tell other dads that because you lost they're going to lose too i know you're i know you're not feeling well and i know you, you're you're feeling pain at the moment but don't give that pain to others okay they if they if you didn't do well doesn't mean that they're not going to do well either they can do pretty well okay um in saying that okay let's get into oh by the way as you can tell i am an over communicator yes yes i love that about myself because for me I, i'm a spiritual person and i think that when something comes up in my mind when i'm making these videos i feel like i have to tell you or like it needs to be said because the person who's watching needs to hear it okay so back to the lawyer okay in taxes of how he was able to get full custody first of all let's back up a minute okay um it is a complicated and long process okay and you do not go asking for full custody straight away um second of all obviously it was in texas and the story that i'm assuming was uh, very similar to the story that i have heard from several dads that have, of how they gain full custody okay and in saying that okay um the that's right going back a little bit saying about the how a lot of the stories are very some of the a lot of stories you hear on facebook are very negative okay they all sound similar okay the only common denominator between you and all the other dads in these facebook groups is that y'all y'all because I'm a friend with Americans too. I can say y'all if I want to, damn it. Um, y'all be making babies with narcissistic women or with women who with personality disorders or with women with mental health disorder, mental health Ill illnesses or a combination of the three. That's the common denominator. 
okay? The things that they do to you, the situation, the breakup, the amount of children, the age of the children, the state that you live in, the kind of parents that she has, the kind of parents that you have, the family, the type of accusations, the amount of time that you get to see your kids, whether you get to see them, whether you get a little bit, all of that, every single story is unique and different. Okay, so now that we know that, take it with a grain of salt, like I said, you just give it a good go and listen to my videos and think with your head, not your heart. Okay, um, in saying that, the log process, first of all, there needs to be a court order. Okay, let's get to the nitty gritty. There needs to be a court order. Okay, there needs to be a judge that has made an order that in this case, the mum had the custody and the dad had visitation. Now, mum, being the narcissistic person that she is, is not following the order because she feels that she's above the law. Okay? Dad then has to go and apply for a contravention because when mum doesn't follow the order, dad doesn't just sit back and go, well, you know, she's not following the order, so now I, you know, now I get to have full custody. No, it doesn't work that way. Now, dad has to go and apply for contravention, okay? And your contravention has to have a legitimate reason or you have to give a legitimate explanation. Now, you're not trying to, you know, tell the courts that you know how to get into your ex's head and explain to them what's going on in your head. No, you're not trying to do that. You're just making your affidavits very simple. Now, one of the main things that I promote, okay, is proof, read your affidavits, sorry, Get somebody else to proof read your affidavits. Somebody that you trust and somebody that is not as emotionally involved with you or your children or with your case. Because your affidavits have got to be candid. This is how other fathers have succeeded. Okay, The affidavits were short, child-focused and candid. If you think that because she wrote a 20 page affidavit that you got to write a 30 page affidavit and explain every accusation that she's done and give another explanation of how if how you how you're telling the truth and then you want to do one better and tell the courts a truth about her how she did this she did that blah 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 and you've single space got 20 pages bad bad that's how dads lose that's how dads don't get good outcomes Okay, so dad's double spaced, mentioned the mum three times at the most. Because look back and read your affidavit if you've done long affidavits. Are they child focused or are they ex focused? How many times did you mention the ex and how many times did you mention your child? Yeah, so then when a judge or the ICL or the courts are reading these affidavits, right, from you and her, is there any difference? Do you think there's going to be any difference if you are making them like her and you think you need to fight like her? Do not fight like a mother because you are not equal to the mother yet. You, dads, if you want to succeed in your case, you have to eat that humble pie, sacrifice your ego, okay, and be the bigger and better person. And write that on paper on, on your affidavits because they make decisions reading your affidavits and from reports from the report writer and little snippets of you in court. So you better, you damn better well make them good. You know, make sure that they're good ones. Make sure that you're doing it properly. Okay. Now, now if you are going to your lawyers and going, blah, 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 my ex did this, my ex did that, I'm not going to write all that. They're just happy to go along. They don't have the time to tell you what I'm telling you. It takes too long. They've got 20 other cases to deal with. If they, if you want to, if they, they'll let you write all that crap. Heck to them, that's more money. More hours spent reading your stuff. Extra money for them. They don't care whether you win or lose. They just care that you pay them. Okay? So, in saying that, affidavit that dad has applied with the contravention, has been short, has been sweet, has been candid, has said something like, the ex has and the mother has contravened the order on this date and such date and such date and such date. Okay? Um, the the way that the, or the order was contravened was by she telling me that she texted me, you annex here, the text, the text has been annexed here saying that the children don't want to come and see me or saying that she's not going to hand over the children. Okay, now when she's literally just texting and saying, I'm not handing you over the children, 
then she's giving you really good evidence, right? I'm, I'm assuming that there are women like that. And when they're being like that, that's good ammunition for you. When they're writing long ass crazy affidavits with all sorts of crazy allegations about you, that is giving you good ammunition. But if you are doing the same, then you have just lost, you know what I mean? I mean, not lost the case, but you've just, you know, you've just given yourself bad points as well. The only reason, the only way you get good points is if you let her say all that crap about you and then you don't respond the same way. Okay? First contravention. She, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. And you might as well self-represent because it's going to cost you way too much money. Obviously, this lawyer got paid a lot to do it. Uh, but a lot of dads have done it without a lawyer. It can be done. It happens every day. So, um, first contravention, the judge is most likely going to have a go at the ex. Tell her that if she doesn't follow the order, he's going to order her to do another parenting course. He's going to order, you know, time made up, etc., etc. Now, for some women... For some mothers, that's enough, and they start following the orders. And so now the chance of you getting that full custody is no more because she's now following the orders. And now you have to learn how to co-parent with her, and now you have to prove to the courts that you know how to handle her, you know how to co-parent with her in an amicable, positive, calm way, okay? And that you understand that this woman's going to be in your life forever and that you don't want your child to be raised by a single mum because you are keen and capable of raising that child as well with her. And you go along, understanding that you go along your merry way, keep following the orders and that's it. Now, if you have a crazy, bat crazy chick that still thinks she's above the law and she still keeps contravening, then dad goes for the second contravention and the third contravention. And by the third or fourth contravention, now the judge is going, if you, to the, to the lady, to the chick, if you don't know how to follow my order, and this dad has to keep coming here, applying for contraventions because you think you're above the law, I have given you many chances because the, dads, the, the judges have to at least show, in case there's an appeal, that they've given them other chances to follow the order and that they've, that they've followed the procedure because the procedure is you know, for the contraventions is that they have to do other things like order time made, order parenting courses, etc. They have to do that first before they can hand over the custody if she keeps contravening. Now, say by the third or fourth contravention that you've applied for because she's kept doing it, that's when judges go hand over the custody to him because at least he's going to follow the order. But by the way, You've said in one of your affidavits, okay, in a candid way, that if it were the other way around, your honour, I would follow the orders. And I think that it's really important for our children, for our children, not my children, but for our children, to have a relationship with their mother, which is just as important to have a relationship with myself. I would never impede the, the, the relationship between um, mother and child, which is why I don't understand why she's impeding you know our children's relationship with me you would put in something like that in your affidavit each affidavit so at least the judge knows that if he sw swaps the custody that you've set on paper because you put it on paper that you will follow the order you're making that their job his decision or her his or her decision easier to make by the third or fourth contravention remember and only if she keeps doing it okay all right so that's how it goes I hope that information serves you well. Please, like I said, keep calm, keep cool, okay? Keep strong. Another one last thing before I go. Dads, if you are a victim of domestic violence, okay? It's, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. But one thing that the courts also do not appreciate, and this is coming from a, lots of fathers who have also told me to pass this on to you. Um, don't act like a victim in the courts or on paper because the courts also don't appreciate fathers or men acting like victims in front of them. They actually don't really appreciate any of them, but they give mothers more slack or, you know, more, more give to them to act like victims, but not for men. Okay. Um, yes, if you're a victim, you know, accept that you're a victim, but when you go into your court battle or when you're doing your court stuff, you know, they want to see strength. Okay. Consistency. Okay. Because if you're, if you're going in there acting like a big mess because that you can't see your children and that it's making you depressed and anxious and 
you don't know what to do with your life then the, the the judges or the courts are going to think well is this guy ready to see his kids like is he okay like does he need to like get his shit together before we can hand him his kids is what's gonna is he gonna be all emotional in front of his kids and his kids are gonna get emotional because remember these people at the courts are not very emotional people so they don't like displays of emotion okay um so just keep calm keep strong keep consistent speak up when it's your chance in court and you are self-representing speak up don't just stand a lot of them say only speak when spoken to when you're in court yes that's true but also if you're in there for you're only in there for about five or ten minutes if in by the first few minutes you haven't been able to say something you stand up and you say your honor when I, please let me know when i'm allowed to speak because i have something really important to say the judge will shut you up because they like to put the authority on people want to show the rest of the courtroom that they have the authority okay don't take that personally okay and then they'll tell, tell you a little bit later or in a few minutes that they'll, they'll say okay stand up and say what you have to say and then make sure you practice oh my god practice 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 before you go into court when you want to speak practice like in the mirror you know practice like your honor uh, I just want to have a, 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 an amicable co-parenting relationship with the ex. I think that's possible because we both love our children very much. And so, Your Honor, can, I would like to, you know, start sharing custody or start having overnights because I've done everything that you've asked me to do. And say that over and over again in front of the mirror to your friends in the car. So that when it comes to the courts, it's just second nature. Because if you think you're going to go to the court and not practice, you're, not gonna, you're, you're gonna freeze okay a court battle is a court battle it's not a walk in the park okay remember when you're at school and you had to do exams if you didn't prepare if you didn't study if you didn't educate yourself you failed same goes with self-representing or even if you have lawyers you still need to educate yourself so you can instruct your lawyers better okay all right that's it i've gone almost to 20 minutes 17 minutes i love you all very much okay thank you for watching and if you can please like this video and share it and leave a comment so that the algorithm can pick it up and more dads like you and their supporters can watch it okay see ya